Hi, I'm Lovely, and welcome to a new series I'm going to be doing called Lovely Talks. In this series, I'm basically going to be just picking a topic that I want to talk about, and that's what I'm going to do. It's going to be just rambling, um, but if I'm any good, there'll be some kind of flow to it. <laughs> uh, it's been a while since I made a video. Uh, I intend for this series to be not a weekly one, but one where I kind of just do it when I feel like it. So, yeah. Uh, I'm going to be talking about Fear the Walking Dead. If you don't know what this is, this is a prequel show to Fear the Walking Dead. Completely different characters, that's what the focus is, and I absolutely love it. This was their first spinoff show, and out of all of them, and this might even include the main show, this is my favorite. I love the show a lot. Um, I highly recommend it right now. It is on HBO Max, and there's still... Some episodes left. It's on its final season, actually. And I wanted to talk about it before the new episodes come out. They come out in a week. I'm recording this. Uh, when am I recording this? Uh, October 16th. And the new ones come out on the 22nd. So I wanted to talk about it before everything was out. And God, uh, I'm going to be talking about spoilers. I was about to say, if you want to watch this, it is on HBO Max. Uh, but I think it's only on there for a month or two. And then after that, I think it's going to go back to AMC+. Plus. I have no idea. It's kind of... I'm not sure. <laughs> when I watched it, it used to be on Hulu and all that kind of stuff. It was much easier. But now, yeah. But hey, I recommend the show a lot. Um, you can listen to me ramble, I guess, if you want. <laughs> if you have not seen it. But I highly recommend it. Uh, recommend this. This is one of my favorite shows. And God is it one that I love. Um, some background... I watched this one. It was coming out. So there are a total of eight seasons, and I think the first season came out in 2015, I want to say. And I watched the first two seasons as they were coming out, and then I stopped watching. I wasn't into it too much, and I just I kind of just dropped it, which I'll go into my reasoning uh, after. But I dropped it, and then in season four, they announced a crossover event uh, where it's like a Walking Dead character is going to be coming into the show. Uh, and then I spent like the next however long uh, just catching up. I just caught up. I binged it real quick. I had a fantastic time. Um, I binged all of season three. I got there in time. Then I watched season four. And what is it? I watched season four. And then half of season five, kind of somewhere in the first half of that season, I stopped watching because I just wasn't feeling it. <laughs> I just wasn't feeling it. And I stopped. And it wasn't until this year when they announced that the show was finally ending in, in season eight, that I decided to finally catch up. And I spent the like last few months just binging it like it was nothing. And I already loved the show. Let me say that now. I already loved the show. And now I love it even more. Um, so yeah, so yeah. Now that you know, let me talk about it. I want to, before I actually talk about it, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Again, this is rambling. Um, I want to go into why I stopped watching the show. Because I quit the show twice. After the first two seasons. And what is it? After the like first half of season five. Or around that time. Um, this is no secret. This is going to be for the people that actually know the show now. <laughs> if you're watching this and you don't know it, thank you. Um, you are welcome to watch. But this is for the people. I, I'm not going to handhold too much during this. But the first three seasons were made by somebody else. Is his name is his name Dave Erickson? Am I getting that right? I'm so sorry if I'm butchering that. Um, but the first three seasons are very, very different because they, uh, what is it? I believe it's a new showrunner or new writer starting season four. It's a soft reboot. Um, and the show was very, very, very different. And I could not do it. Um. Though, Walking Dead at the time was, f like, I think that's, I want to say Season 4 of Fear of the Walking Dead, because that came out after Season 8 of The Walking Dead. I want to say that's when Walking Dead fatigue was somewhere near its peak. Assuming the peak isn't going up every single day. Um, if you are a fan of The Walking Dead, which I am, I'm a big fan. I, I, I said I caught up on Fear of the Walking Dead. I caught up on every single show. Um, and I intend to... Uh, reread the comics um, in a few weeks, actually. But no, um, if you know Walking Dead in any kind of way, you would know it's kind of tough being a fan of it. 
and I don't want to do anything boring, at least to me, boring, and just hate like by saying it's slow, saying it's like it's boring, all that kind of stuff. Because, I mean, that's a known fact. Uh, <laughs> it, to me, it's not saying anything interesting. If I'm like, yeah, Walking Dead is kind of boring. Sometimes it kills people. It's kind of cheap, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, everybody knows that. If you tell me that, I won't. You won't get really a reaction out of me because, like, yeah, I know. <laughs> that yeah <laughs> so imagine the setting up the stage everybody I'm, I, I'm gonna say everybody let me just talk about me i'm already if you're watching it for season after season just binging like i what is it eight seasons it kind of gets harder and harder to watch and if you're tired of it you get tired of it and in the first half of season five i got tired of watching and i dropped it I did kept hearing uh, news about it, like big deaths, that kind of stuff, or characters returning, all that kind of stuff. But I, I didn't want to watch it until the final season came out. And, well, it came out. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, let me catch up. And I got to tell you, I highly recommend this. If you did not like it, it's it's tough because I, I know I can enjoy it because of how I am. It's hard to for me to say, oh, I recommend it like this. Because even if something's like, let's say, not good, Fear of the Walking Dead, like, let's say Walking Dead related, I'm going to watch it anyway um, at this point. But no, giving it a little break and going into it again, I could say I very much enjoyed it a lot more the second time around. Um, let's start with, I'm going to talk about the first half of season four later because that's such a bigger topic. Um, and I should say, I'm probably going to make more videos on Fear of the Walking Dead. I don't know how long this one is going to be. I always make a joke about how I'm going to have a video over two hours. This might be the one. I doubt it, <laughs> but this might be the one. Um, but no. What is it? There are some big things to talk about, like let's say Madison or Nick and all this kind of stuff. But I'm going to talk about the stuff that's uh, like I want to say at least assumed less talk about. I'm going to talk about the second half of season four. Um it's rough. It's really rough. <laughs> it is really rough. But after I want to say those first two episodes, those first two episodes are pretty slow. It is the start of the hurricane arc, all that kind of stuff. But um, we get introduced to what's her name? Sierra and Wen. Um, the like, you know, the trucker people. You, you get introduced to a lot. Uh, Jim, the dude who makes beers. Or I think it's trying to. I can't remember. And I don't know. On the watch that I did, because I've watched that, I think I've only watched that season one time. Um, the first half, I've watched plenty of times. I love that. I'll get into that later. But see, uh, season four beyond, I've only seen once. So I went into it this time, knowing about the parts that I didn't like. If you don't remember the antagonist <laughs> uh, for the second half of season four, uh, I'm happy for you because that is one of the worst antagonists in the show, probably in the whole series. Uh, <laughs> it's really rough. But on a second go, when I already knew that, and I knew I, I kind of just like, I already accepted it. I'm already accepting the bad when I watch the show. It was easy. It was easier. Yeah, like, yeah, it was silly, but I could enjoy the binge. And, uh, yeah, I gotta say, I really enjoyed watching the second half more than the first half this time around on my watch through. Um, and then I got to season five, and I enjoyed it a lot more, too. I really did. Um, and I'm talking strictly the first half. I did like the second half, but again, I only, I stopped watching around the time that Alicia, I might say her name wrong, Alicia, Alicia, is that it? Uh, I'm terrible with that name. Um, I stopped at the point where Alicia had the radioactive blood on her. And that's one. Yeah, that is for real. When I stopped, I I was just bored out of my mind the first time I watched it. But on a second go, I was pretty into it, and I think from what I hear, season five gets a lot of hate. But I enjoyed watching the show so much. It was a wonderful binge, uh, a wonderful <laughs> bin, binge, uh, a wonderful binge, and I'm glad I got back into it. Um, but no, that's why I stopped watching the second time. The first time. Um, I stopped watching again, just to repeat it was after season two. Um, and this one is a bigger discussion. It kind of, I can, I can, I can finally start reviewing the series kind of, this isn't a review, but it's kind of just, I want to talk about it from the beginning to the end, but
but I am going to be jumping around a little bit, especially at the beginning, as you can tell. I haven't even started at the beginning. <laughs> um, but no, I think on a first go, the first couple seasons can be pretty rough on your first watch. But I realized this when I showed my friend uh, the show a couple years ago, that I'm not going to lie, these you can really appreciate this show on a second watch. It's like all the relationships are kind of like, you can feel it in the first episode. It, the first episode is one of my favorite episodes in the show. Rewatch it. Everything is so defined and it's so good. One of the reasons why Fear the Walking Dead is so good is because it's a Walking Dead thing, but you watch it and there's almost a constant feeling of, oh my God, this is so good. What the hell am I watching? And you feel that, I want to say, almost all the time during the first three seasons. Uh, genuinely. Um, this show doesn't have... It doesn't have... Like, you know how Walking Dead, you might not like it, but you keep going because of all the actors the stars? It's the main show. Of course, you're going to keep going. Fear the Walking Dead doesn't have that. It might have similar issues where it's like, oh, that might be a little boring, or this character's being stupid. But this, these are all just new people. You don't kind of have that attachment. You could drop it so easy, and I think a lot of people did, uh, including myself. I stopped watching after the second season. I remember watching that finale, seeing what happens to Chris and everything, and it was incredible. G genuinely, I think what happened to Chris is amazing. It is one of the most perfectly executed um, deaths of a character, I think, in the whole Walking Dead universe. Um, and I loved it. But it wasn't the main show, and I dropped it. <laughs> and I dropped it. Um, and I remember I didn't I didn't start rewatching it again until I can't remember. I think I'm trying to remember right now when I did catch up on it. I don't know if I rewatched the first two seasons. I really can't remember. Um, but I didn't catch up on it until I started my first job. Like I would watch the episodes at work. I remember watching season three at work on my lunch break. And God, this show is so good. So, that's kind of the reason why I stopped. Now, I'm going to talk about the series. And I want to start from the beginning. Um, this isn't going to be super, let's say, retrospective. Um, well, I mean, it is going to be retrospective. I am talking about everything. But I, I'm mostly going to be talking about how I feel about it now. Maybe not when I watched. Um, but this first season and first episode, holy shit. It is so good. It is insane. It really is. Uh, one, I should say this, Nick is one of my favorite characters. If we're talking about, <laughs> if we're talking about, like, the first three seasons of the show, maybe fourth, um, as well. He's one of my favorites, if not my favorite. He is so good, I love him. <laughs> um, the actor is also just incredible. I've only seen him in this. I need to check him out in more stuff. I don't know what he's doing. Um, but he is fantastic. Uh, but yeah, Nick is one of my favorites. Uh, Madison and Travis. Oh my God. <laughs> um, I'm rewatching it now with a friend of mine because I'm kind of in my little Fear the Walking Dead obsession thing. I'm watching season six, like all the John Dory stuff with some friends, and I'm watching this season with another friend right now. I don't think we're going to finish it, but we are We are watching it. Um, and I noticed I'm not into Travis as much uh, during the army arc. I kind of think it's cute how he believes them, he trusts them, but I'm not super into it. But Madison, I'm loving Madison. Um, one of the things in the show that is so good and executed amazingly in the first episode, and I want to say the whole show, um, is the relationship between Madison and Nick. It's heartbreaking to watch, and I, I, I love it. Um, the story with Nick, where he really is like, I saw somebody eating themselves, and there's, if, like, let's say this, if I saw that from the drugs... That's not good. <laughs> if you saw that for real, that's not good. I love it so much. Um, I don't know how much I'll talk about this, but one of the reasons why I, lo I love this show in the first place. Also, I'm going. I'm jumping everywhere. I'm so sorry. I barely talked about the first episode. I I'll get back to it. Um, but one of the reasons why I love this show early on, um, I still love it later. I'll, I'll go into that when I get there. But um, it's not a super white show. Again, I'm strictly talking starting. Um, it's not super white, and I love that. 
it's genuinely um jumping ahead season three season three is about white people taking um the native american um you know indians land and this is in again i I can't stress this enough this is in the walking dead universe hello it's so good and of course hey (laughs) everybody loves season three from what i've seen everybody loves um loves it but no that's something i really like in the first three seasons is that it's not super white and it's it's so it's just so different and cool i don't know how to say it (laughs) um this is just in general this show is so good and it's very different from the walking dead it's more defined of course it would be because i don't know if you rewatched that first season of the walking dead it's pretty amateur and it's kind of iffy if i'm going to be honest um still love it um but yeah, it starts off super strong, and I've shown it to some people. Honestly, they weren't into it, and I think this again it goes back to this show is much better once you rewatch it. Um, so I'm going to be talking about season one, two, and three in that sense that I've already wa- I've watched it a lot. Um, I can't say that I loved it on my first go, but on my every go after that, incredible. <laughs> genuinely incredible i think i've watched it only four to five times season three probably watched that one the most um out of all the seasons yeah (laughs) um but no i i love the first season it's super simple six episodes the outbreak starts we have all these families coming together the army's here and it all goes to shit as it as as it would i mean it's very i want to say generic um generic but i want to say understandably generic for not only a first season but also a zombie thing um though here's the thing i haven't seen much zombie stuff i'm kind of just talking (laughs) um at least to me it seemed generic but not in a bad way it's an understandable generic but no i love it so much um if you love mothers, this is the show for you. <laughs> All that kind of stuff. It's it's really nice. And I didn't mention it before, but I should say this and this isn't a secret, at least to me, this show has a big teenager problem for the first two, maybe three seasons. I'm gonna go with two. Um Chris I can't say he's probably he's really hard to watch. Not in a good way. It's tough when he's on screen, um, which is really tough because I love how his story goes. But I gotta tell you, I like I like talking about it more than I like watching it. Kinda, kinda. Um, I do like the second half of season two with Travis and Chris. I think it's beautiful, but he is hard to watch. Um, and I don't think I have much to say. I don't want to be rude and be like, "Oh, it's the actor" and all that kind of stuff. Um, but no, it. it it ha- I think the show has a big teenager problem, like Alicia and her, or Alicia and her high school like relationship. I come on, <laughs> where they're like where they're tough. It's tough. Teenage love is tough, <laughs> and it's kind of silly. Um, I don't know if the- I think this is controversial. I'm not sure. I have seen some people that are really big fans, um, stands I guess of Alicia, and m- I don't. I'm gonna be honest. I don't think I have liked her i haven't disliked her but i don't think i liked her or i liked her at all in her run on the show i don't think she's coming back by the way um we'll get to that later (laughs) because that's a big conversation that's a big conversation but i don't think her character necessarily hit for me in the early seasons and the later ones i guess i think my favorite uh the point where alicia is my favorite is probably season five at the start of her not killing anybody arc. But genuinely, I'm not super into her character. Um, So that's what I mean when I say the show has a teenager problem at the beginning, because you have Chris and Alicia, and I'm not super about them. Um, But everybody else, wonderful. I love them. (laughs) But yeah, all this stuff, didn't even get to it. Strand. Strand gets introduced. You don't see him on the... uh, on the screen right now. I didn't even talk about that. You are going to be looking at this. If you are looking, you're just going to be looking at this image for however long this video is. Um, I should have said it way earlier. These videos are meant to be kind of watched in the background while you do stuff. Um, 
I'm not going to do fancy editing and that kind of stuff because I I don't want to. <laughs> uh, also because I know how I'm I'm probably gonna watch this later. Um, I know I'm not gonna be looking at the screen, so I'm not gonna edit. You know. <laughs> um, but yeah, first season we also get the wonderful character Strand, probably one of my favorites in the whole universe. This show has a lot of my favorite characters in the entire uh Walking Dead universe. I love it so much. But no, first season, a very standard first season, but I love it. I love that. I, I've already watched it very recently, and I'm rewatching it again. Still love it. Um, you have the Clarks, and you have the, is it Manwa? Is that their last name? Manawa? I think it's Manawa. Um, which is like, you have Madison, Nick, Alicia, and then um, Chris. And I don't remember the mother's name right now. I don't remember her name, but I do know that it is the actress from Orange is the New Black, and she plays a mother there as well. Aleda? Something like that? I, I don't remember what her name is here. Um, unfortunately, she is somewhat forgettable. Um, the other family, we have the Salazars, of course, the goats. <laughs> we have Daniel, um, Ophelia, and uh, unfortunately, I don't remember... Is it Griselda? I think it's something like that. Uh, I have watched this recently. I should know it better. I think it's Griselda. Um, she's also somewhat forgettable. Uh, uh, another thing to mention why I think it was very easy for people to drop the show is um, this is not on them at all. But they introduce a lot of people, and you, if you don't get it, you just don't get it. And that's, again, <laughs> I didn't get it when I first watched it. But it's a lot to keep track of. And I want to say it's possibly hard to in be invested if you're kind of always confused. Um, I'm not going to say it's necessarily super confusing, but it's understandable why someone would be like, I don't know what's happening. You know? I, ho I hope that makes sense. Um, another reason why people probably dropped off this show. Um, but yeah, second season, we have Strand and we have a boat, and I'm not, I, I really like season two. I think there's probably some parts in the middle that I could do without, maybe some of the hotel stuff. But the first half of season two was kind of, um, how do I say it, kind of Monster of the Week. I don't know if anthology is the right word, or even Monster of the Week. Um, but we have the episode where we just land somewhere for a little bit, and it's like, it kind of just has like this weird-ass father, um, quote-unquote, taking care of his uh, wife and kids, you know? If you remember that storyline, he's keeping them sheltered. And all this kind of stuff. It's kind of icky. But we go there and we just leave. We have the episode where we rescue the people from that plane crash. Um, if you can remember the name of the mini so good for you. I can't. That's for sure. <laughs> um, that is something I actually do want to do at some point. I want to watch all the, uh, like the mini series that came in between. I know there's one on a submarine. Uh, there's one... I was going to say Red Machete, but that's for the main show. Uh, but no, there's one for the plane, submarine, all this kind of stuff. There's a few, and I have not watched them because I didn't want to include that on my binge. That would be too difficult. <laughs> I should say, I am going to be mostly talking about Fear the Walking Dead in this. I, I will make references to the other stuff, but this video isn't Lovely Talks. Um, the whole Walking Dead universe, this is Lovely Talks Fear the Walking Dead. So... I'm going to do my best to not spoil anything in the other shows other than things I imagine are kind of known or just, I, you know, if you're watching this, it'd be weird if you, if you looked up Walking Dead content and you weren't a fan of it to, you know, kind of be, I feel like if you're watching Walking Dead stuff at this point, you either got to be a hater, which is valid, or you have to be someone who just loves it. I don't think there's any in between. <laughs> um... What I'm saying is, <laughs> I don't think you'd be watching this unless you were a Mega Walking Dead fan. <laughs> you know? Um, so yeah, Season 2, this one has a lot in it. And I do love it. Oh god, oh god, I didn't, this is stuff, I didn't even talk about it. I, I forgot to mention it, I'm so sorry. I just remembered it because in Season 2 they started changing it. The Fear of the Walking Dead has my favorite intro out of every show I've watched. It's so good. It's so good. And I mean this every single intro. The one from season one, in the first three seasons, the blah, the loud noise one. 
uh, that just fucking hits for me. It's so good. It gives me chills. And I, um, I know some people don't like it. I will go more on the topic later. But the season four intro, also really good. Really, really good. Um, I guess it's considered different, but I consider it the same. I mean, at least to me it is. Maybe slightly different, but the season six intro and so on. The intros for Fear the Walking Dead are so good, and I love them so much. Um, I just, I remember, I got reminded of it, because I remember when I went to binge it, or like catch up, and I got the season two years ago, many, many, many years ago, I'm like, oh yeah, they just start changing the intro for some reason. Um, I can't tell you why. I don't really know. I'm not necessarily complaining, but I remember it being confusing on the first watch because I always look forward to that intro. Um, I wonder if that's like, I wonder if someone at the top is making that decision or if that's a creative one. Because here's the thing, they start doing that for the new season as well. And I'm not talking about how everything, how every episode has a different one, kind of, but more so the audio is different. Um, enough to the point where you could say that they're kind of just fucking around. Not in a bad way, but it's, it's an interesting thing. I, I'm, I'm curious on why. Um, I will say this. They do set up the stage. Um, there's a very fantastic fan video that has every intro in the first three seasons. Um, he calls them intro variants, which is very funny considering where we are now in The Walking Dead. Um, with the variants and stuff. Um, but no, I watched that video, and while I think while I watched the show, I didn't like the intros being different. I don't know, I kind of get it now. I'm kind of, I'm kind of with it. Um, but no. God, those intros, this has, again, every single intro, I love it so much. It's so creative, just unique. It's beautiful. Uh, genuinely. It's, it's my favorite intro out of every show I've watched. Um, and I like to think I've watched a lot of shows. <laughs> but no, let's talk about what happens in season two, because God... It's heartbreaking. Um, first, we lose Daniel. This is the first time we lose Daniel. We're going to say that a couple times, I think. Just a couple more times. Um, and it's kind of sad. He kind of... He gets... I'm I'm sorry if I don't do any of the plot lines justice in me re-explaining them or anything like that. But if I recall, I think he gets hit hard with a lot of the religious stuff. Um... Like it hits, a, he's sensitive for some stuff, and it hits just a little too close. He does not like what that lady's doing. Um, if you don't remember, I believe Strand's boyfriend, his mother is like, oh, like super religious, um, and it, it rubs Daniel the wrong way, especially after losing his wife. And everything. It's, is Ophelia... God, I'll... When is the hotel plot? I'm really... Hmm. The hotel stuff is season two, right? I guess... Oh, wait. Maybe... Oh, okay. That's after. That's after. That's after. Ophelia's still there. But no. Daniel's going through some stuff. And he... He puts it to get... He, he says it really well in season six. Where he kind of loses his mind, essentially. And burns the place down. Um... God damn. I like talking about it, but I remember that episode actually being one of my least favorites in the series. <laughs> um, you have the first episode when they get there, and then the second episode when they actually burn down the place. I do not like that episode because of what they do to Nick. I love Nick. I do not like him in that episode. <laughs> and I wish I can go super specific with it, but that would mean I would have to remember... And I just don't. <laughs> uh, but no, I remember him being kind of super attached to the lady in charge, the religious one I was just talking about. And I remember not liking what they do with his character, but it is kind of instantly forgot about the next episode. So what can you do? <laughs> that's kind of one of the that's kind of one of the things where uh, you get to an arc and it's like, man, I can't wait for it to be over. And luckily, it's over extremely quick, extremely, extremely quick. Um, but no, the main people I really want to talk about, yes, everybody has their thing going. Um, Ophelia kind of just disappears. Um, I'll talk about that later. <laughs> she kind of just walks away. Um, Alicia, is it Alicia? Yeah, sorry, you're going to hear me do that a few times. Alicia and Madison, they're doing their own thing. That That's fine, good for them. Protect that hotel, do what you got to do. 
But I want to talk about um, Travis and Chris. It took me a little bit. <laughs> hey, if you can't tell, I am rambling. Um, I also haven't done a video in a long time. This is the first video. I'm kind of just winging it. Um, let me know how this is. But no, we have Travis and Chris. I can't. I'm going to be completely for real with you. Completely for real. Chris might have the best death out of the out of this family. <laughs> out of the Clarks and I didn't even talk about the mom dying, that's how, you know. But I mean it. Out of Travis, Nick, Nick is really good. Nick has a good death, but I'll go into that later. You have Nick, potentially Alicia, but I that's another topic. That's another topic. We'll we'll get to that point. We'll get to that point. Um but let's say this, Chris vs. Travis, uh, Chris has a much better death, and I know that doesn't, you know, <laughs> they, it's, I think a lot of people have better deaths than Travis, kind of, but I think his death is written so well. To remind you, he, he is someone that is, uh, he needed a better influence, and he did not get that. He found two punk, like, two punk young adults and he stuck to, he he decided to go with them and he paid for it and i think the way they do it is really cool um we one they have the two punk kids that chris was with the last time we saw them they left and then the next time we see them it's just the punk kids and no chris where it's like oh they want us to think chris is dead because the episode ends there it's like a little cliffhanger and then in the next couple episodes, we learn that Chris died off screen. What the fuck? What? That blew my mind when it happened. And it still does to this day that they were able to pull off a move like that and not have it. It's so easy to fuck that up. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't think it was predictable, where it's like, like oh yeah, we're supposed to think he's dead, but he's not. No, he's fucking dead. What you thought, like, oh, he's not supposed... He's dead. And you don't learn about it until the next episode. They give you a lot of time to think about it. And, at least for me, it got me. It's like, no, he crashed the car, and they just killed him. I... I love it. It's it's so tragic when you add in Travis to all the all the mix because it's it's like it's the thing Travis needed to finally kind of go berserk, and it's so satisfying and it just hits because I gotta tell you, I might enjoy Chris ten percent of the time he's on screen, and that's a maybe, <laughs> but he has one of my favorite storylines ever. Ever. His his dad, the last thing his dad says to him is, God damn you. Like, hello? Who is writing this? Because this is really good. What happened to you? Are you okay? <laughs> um, it's so tragic, and it, it leaves a mark. Um, I think you can tell with how I'm talking about it. At least, I hope people like it. I actually don't know. I haven't looked at comments. I haven't looked at anything for that at all in, like, when did Chris die? 2016? It's like seven years ago. I haven't seen... I don't know how people feel about it. People might hate it. But for me, I loved it. It was so good. It's like really perfect. Um, and then that's basically how season two ends. Um, we do have the storyline where Nick gets to... I'm not going to say Colt, but this other, uh, this other settlement... Uh, where a guy is like, he's like, uh, I got bit, but I, yeah, I'm fine. Um, we did have that, and I'm, I'm kind of okay with it. But once you know what happened, it's like, okay, I guess. <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, there's not too much to talk about story wise there. Other than we get Luciana, um, and <clears throat> sorry, let me drink some water real quick. I'm sorry if any of that is audible. Um, we get Luciana, which I'm going to... Unfortunately, she is in... I want to say... How many seasons is she in? Two? Two? She's in, like... 
seven of the seasons of the show. This is probably the one where she does the most. Um, it's unfortunate. So, let's talk about it. Because season two, I'm kind of, I'm pretty much done with season two, by the way. That's the stuff I wanted to talk about there. How long is this video going to be? It, oh, I just saw, oh, I just saw the time snap. We're at 36 minutes, 35 minutes, sorry. Um, but no, at the start, around the start of season two, or like sometime in season two, Ophelia just leaves. She's like, okay, bye. I'm out. I, by the way, I just remember that Alicia, again, Alicia had a, like, a love story with some random guy on a boat. Again, teenager problem, I just remember that. But yes, this is interesting to me because I, I want to break this down a bit. But Ophelia, um, she just leaves in Season 2, and then she connects later on in Season 3 with uh, one of the new groups that we get. That I, I meant, I'm In case I didn't, I meant to say Ophelia. I might have said Luciana. I, I meant Ophelia. I think I said Ophelia, though. But the next season, jumping around a little bit, Luciana just leaves. And it really interests me on how if if we were in the different reality, the one where they kept going with the storyline they were doing before the soft reboot, was she just going to come back with an, uh, with another group? That's a, at least that's my prediction. I feel like that's what would have happened, and it's kind of just at least for me interesting to talk about. I'm 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 gonna talk about the show doing a soft reboot a lot more once I get to the end of season three. But hey, we're on season three. Um, holy shit, <laughs> this is so good, and I want to say it's not a. St- it, it, I want to say it's almost unanimous that this is people's favorites. It's either this season. Or season six. Um, but I love season three so much. And I have watched it so much. It is so good. One, you have Troy. <laughs> um, which is how I knew him. I knew him as Isaac from Teen Wolf. <laughs> That's crazy. Hey, if anybody got that, good for you. Um, but he is fantastic. He is so good. My dog is spooking me right now. It's okay. He he uh he just got up a little bit and started growling. That's a little spooky. You okay, Kaleo? Good dog, good dog. Oh my god. <laughs> he spooked me a little bit. But no. We have Troy. We have I can't remember the name. Um is his name Walker? We have a lot of stuff. Season three has a lot of stuff going on. And I really like it. Um, I am a sucker for plots where it's like white people are really fucking dumb because they are. And I love that so much. <laughs> it's so good. And again, it's in the Walking Dead universe. I love it. Um, but God, season three is a good one. And that's the thing. I could Here's the thing. I could say a lot about it. But because it's no secret that it's kind of loved. I kind of don't have too much to say on it. Does that make sense? <laughs> I felt this way with a different show that I, I've done a review on on this channel for. Um, but no, season three, I love it. Um, it's just There's just a lot about it. <laughs> I'm debating right now. Do I just move on to the next season? Do I, what, what do I, what do I do? Um, oh, I should talk about it. Probably the thing, the thing to talk about most is let's talk about Travis and let's talk about the dam and how the season ends. Um, Travis, how do we feel about his death? It, I've watched it with people, and they have not liked it. It's such an odd way to introduce it. So, let me try to remember. Season 1 and 2, not season 1 and 2, episodes 1 and 2, they premiered together. And Travis, he gets killed in the second episode. He gets killed right at the beginning. And I'm trying to think. Like, because I think the death works. But it should have been at the end of the first episode. Should it? Right? Does that make sense? Because I think I would be fine with it then. But you just start the second episode and it kind of feels random. 
Um, and I know some people are like, yeah, uh, it really shows, it, it's really realistic. Uh, it shows all this kind of stuff, etc. cetera. I, uh, look, I get it, but I don't think that means anything. Um, <laughs> at least it, it's like, yeah, it might be realistic, random deaths, but it's extremely not satisfying. You know what I mean? Um, and I know when this, I believe when this happened, they've talked about how Travis completed his arc. He protected his family. Um, <laughs> I think I disagree with that. <laughs> he did do that. He did do that, but I wouldn't necessarily call it an arc. I guess. Um, that being said, I kind of do like the death. Because of how odd it is, you know? Um, I'm not saying they should have kept Travis alive and all that stuff. I, I, I believe this was behind-the-scenes stuff. Um, a lot of different factors. He left the show. But... It's so fascinating how they did it. I assume he died in the second episode because if he died in the first one, I think a lot of people might have stopped watching and they wanted to keep people there after they were hooked and more like more hooked and more invested. I think that is just my theory. Um it kind of helps that they kind of get away with it because they did both episodes uh, as a premiere. You know, um, that's how, that's why I felt like they've always done that, how they did it, but it's an interesting death. And the theme, the intro for that episode hits so hard. It's, it, it really captures how you're feeling. Um, again, talking about that one fan video, I think his death bothers me, but, but when I watch that intro, I really like it. There's something about it where, yes, it does keep you on your toes. Um, and it's kind of scary. It's, it's, it really does keep you on your toes. Um, I should say that's a, one of the reasons why the first three seasons of Fear is so good is because, yeah, you know, a lot of characters are going to live like, let's say if you rewatch it, but when you're watching it, the stakes are pretty high almost all the time. Um, Madison, <laughs> I love, I love her, but she gets away with a lot. Um, a lot of things where she should probably just die in. And some people might be like, oh, plot armor, all this kind of stuff. Um, plot armor, that like that expression, by the way, means nothing to me. Um, it really does mean nothing to me. But more so, it makes it really interesting, not interesting, but scary to watch where it's like, holy shit, if, are people about to die? What the hell is happening? And I really like it. And it's a, it's a feeling that's there in the first three seasons that I really love. But hey, let's talk about... The dam. Um, I've thought about this a lot and how I would approach it because this is a very big moment in the series, uh, and this is where the fracture in the fan base starts. <laughs> uh, validly so, validly. But no, the dam explosion and let's just say the whole episode. One of my favorite episodes in the show. Um, technically, I'm gonna I, not to. How do I say it? Not to sound like how a lot of other people sound. This is kind of, I want to say, the first series finale of the show. <laughs> um, because really, that's the tough part with the show. I love it. And yes, there are eight seasons. But when you start, when you start the first episode and it's like, wow, I'm going to get eight seasons of this. You're not. You're only going to get three. <laughs> and this one is a rough one to watch. In a good way. In a good way and a sad way, because yes, it feels like a show is ending, because it essentially is, um, not to insult the, the future stuff, it's just, this is a very, this is when it, it's different, I mean, you get a soft reboot after this. If you watch this and you're like, yeah, I want more of this, um, while I might enjoy the show after this, it is very different. Very, very, very different. Some good, some bad. Um... But god damn, that damn episode is so good. Can we talk about it? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> that episode is so good, and I've rewatched it every so often. It's funny. This is it's because it's it is on the older side a little bit. But I remember watching. I did my whole binge of all the like Fear of the Walking Dead, and then I rewatched that episode again just because I wanted to feel what I feel in that episode. The audio is kind of bad when people talk. <laughs> if if hey, if there's any like knowledgeable audio people watching this. I don't know why you are watching this. You're probably doing something else. Um, why is that? Why does the audio sound bad? Because I don't want to be like... It, bad's, bad's not the correct word, 
but you could you know what I mean? There's something there with it. Um but no. What a what a fantastic episode. Um and I that's the thing. Again, when something's loved and it's known to be loved, there's not much to say. But goddamn, is this episode just fantastic? Um, one, we have all the dream sequence stuff, and I remember when I stopped watching the show, something I heard on Talking Dead was, this came out around the time of Negan, um, where it's like, oh my god, who's gonna die? And I remember them describing this damn thing as, uh, who didn't die? And I think it's really good. It's like, well, what's happening? What's happening? Is Alicia, is Alicia dead? Is Nick dead? Uh, Madison dead? What's happening? And it's so good. It's so good. Is Daniel dead? He just got shot in the fucking face. Is he alive? How is Strand going to get out of this bullshit? <laughs> um, et cetera, et cetera. It is so beautiful. It's beautifully... It, it's crafted so well, and I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, and goddamn. I don't think I have much to say. The stuff I want to say about Season 3 now... Um, I want to talk about headcanons and theories <laughs> headcanon this is my headcanon call me crazy do what you like and i i genuinely mean this i think travis is alive is he supposed to be hell no i'm going to just give myself a headcanon and be like yes he got shot in the neck he didn't get bit by the way apparently i, I thought he, i thought he got bit but apparently it's a common misconception because the lighting was all fucked. Uh, he just got shot. Um, and it's kind of graphic. But it did it did make it look like he got bit during the zombie pit thing. But no, I think he just got shot. He fell down. Don't ask me how he survived. Um, but he... <laughs> don't ask me how he survived anything. But um, my headcanon is that he survived because someone helped him. If we want to be really funny with it, we could say Dakota helped him. Um, <laughs> to kill her sister. <laughs> um, no. It's, again, it's, it's kind of a joke, but genuinely, he is, to me, he is alive. <laughs> uh, he fell in the desert, someone saved him, etc. To me, he is alive, we didn't see a dead body. Not to be that person, but we did not see a dead body. He's alive in my heart. But no, the other thing... I want to talk about the Proctors. If you don't remember the Proctors, I believe they were this group of people at the, not the stadium, whatever that trading place was. Um, was that a stadium? That might have just been a stadium too. Wait a goddamn minute. Anyway, anyway, they were a group there and they were the ones, they were the bad guys taking the dam. Um, I know I've seen comments where some people are like, man, they were really sad that they dropped this storyline with the Proctors. They wanted to see where it goes. Um, I don't want to be rude to those people. But at least for me, I am perfectly okay that that storyline was dropped because I did not care about them at all. They are really, they're fine as like the two episode villain. They, ha they are in that season a lot, like a lot, but like in the background. But as like two episodes, I'm okay with. I'm okay with. I did not need more of them. Um, uh, and spoilers with Troy coming back. Uh, <laughs> I just remember how he got hit in the head. Um, with Troy coming back, I, I wonder if he's going to have a line or something where he's like, yeah, I took out the Proctors. Is that, is that, uh, an insane ask or maybe insane theory? I feel like that's what's going to happen. I hope it does. Um, or is that just going to be a thread that they just leave out there? Because I... Look, here's the thing. It's always good. You don't have to answer everything. If something's out there, something's out there. You do not have to answer everything. Genuinely. Um, but I don't think they're going to do anything with the Proctors. <laughs> like, I don't think there's going to be an episode of Tales of the Walking Dead that is going to be about the Proctors. You know what I mean? Um, I wouldn't mind the line if it's like, yeah... Uh, I, I try handle the proctors or some shit like that. I don't know. Um, but no, that's th to me, uh, that's before, <laughs> before we even, oh my God, we're going to see Troy next week. Oh my God. I just fucking thought about, but well, probably not. He's probably going to be saved for the second episode. Um, but no, I want to talk about what would have happened 
No, actually, no. I'm so sorry. If you are dealing with, if you are watching this video and dealing with all of it, I applaud you so much. And th I thank you. Genuinely thank you. I want to talk about something um, when it comes to the reboot. Because a lot of people hate it, and I completely understand why. Season 4 is like seeing the show you loved get crushed to pieces. <laughs> they kill your, they kill the two favorite characters, and then we kind of just fuck around for the rest of it. Like, yes, we have John Dory. Uh, yes, we have Morgan. But it really feels like the show you got invested in, got attached to, gets it. It's getting destroyed. Um, I feel like I had a point with all of this. <laughs> I feel like I had a point. Um, no, but I've seen people where it's like, man, why did they do this crossover? Why did they do all this stuff, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I I think if they didn't do this crossover, the show would have maybe had a season or two left in it. Um, genuinely, I mean that for real. The ratings weren't doing too well. I mean, they still aren't, you know? <laughs> this is not a popular show. The one thing I always see with this show is people making fun of it, like on TikTok or something. Like, like, oh, what are they doing in Fear the Walking Dead? And it's like them in like a hot air balloon that's shaped like a beer bottle. Or it's the dad of Padre getting eaten and then talking while he's getting eaten. Like... The crossover is rough, but I really think the show would have died earlier. Um, <laughs> hey, hey, if you hear my dog in the background, sorry. But no, it's like, I really think the crossover kept the show going for a bit. Um, I'm going to be real. I don't, know, I don't know how AMC has money to do all these Walking Dead shows. Someone's got to be laundering money or something. But... Like, really, I really think the show would have ended way sooner. And in some people's eyes, it did, understandably so. Um, I don't think I mentioned it. I, I, I talked about it, but then I forgot to say my point. The whole point, when I talked about how I gave the show a break and it made it way more watchable when I watch it, is because it was really frustrating to watch. Walking Dead, watching it week by week, year by year, is very frustrating. And... When I rewatched it, it was much better. Doesn't mean it wasn't bad. <laughs> Doesn't mean it wasn't bad at some points. Again, season four is super rough. Um, it's super rough, but I do think there's good things after it. Um, and I think other people agree too. It's it's interesting to see people like some people don't like the intro; they like the other one. I think they're both good. I think they fit what's now. Um, Right, like the season, the intro from season four on. I think that's what fits that kind of tone. What they're going for. I I don't necessarily dislike the more goofy kind of thing that Fair does with like these first like. I want to say season four and five. Yeah, I mean you have the bear bottle stuff. You have an alligator. You have a dude who could just he could do what John Dory. He could just in perfect aim. Like, I don't necessarily dislike it, but it it it's rough. It was really rough at the time, and it's still not good. Some cases, you know, just some things. You could do a whole video on just like dissecting it all. Um, if I had a point, I don't know what it was. Um, but no, more so is like, I'm glad the show kept going. I don't mind the crossover. It's. It's it's a tough one, but no, I really do think this crossover was nice because Perfect Universe, yes, they would have kept going, but guess what? Nick would have died anyway, or he would have died at the dam, or something or other, you know? Um, it really does feel like we're in the alternate reality, and the other reality got to see what Fear was going to be. The tough thing with Fear, I did talk about how it has this constant feeling. It has this constant feeling of like, how is this so good? Oh my god, this is incredible! But it's a show that, at least to me, never reaches its full potential. And I think that's why I love it so much. Because if it did, it's like, okay, it's done, it's over. But 
I love it so much. It's so good, and it just it it's just never perfect, you know. It's never perfect, and all you see about it is people shitting on it. And I can't say I disagree with some of it, but you know, it's like I love the show a lot. Um, I don't think I necessarily have a point. I'm just talking about the show at this point. Um, but no, let's talk about season four. <laughs> We have Nick. I'm going to mostly just talk about Nick and Madison. I'm going to be completely for real with you. <laughs> I'm going to be completely for real with you. I'm just going to talk about those two. Let's talk about Nick. He was my favorite character, and he's probably my favorite character in the whole universe. Um, for, for Like, for The Walking Dead. I love... Just, like, the story with him being, like, a drug addict. The story with his mom... The mother-son relationship, I don't know, it's its one that I just love, and it's its rough to watch, and I really like his death. I would say that he's a tough character to kill, because to me, he's unkillable. He kind of, like, just his vibe and everything, to me, he's unkillable. I don't know how you could do a death for him and have it feel necessarily right. That being said, I think the death they gave him was... Ri- pretty good um like like him him losing himself and all that kind of stuff yes that part's good but the stuff with the flowers him being shot being killed dying but then we get to see the like you know him laying down in the flowers it's beautiful it really is beautiful um and i believe the actor he's talked about how he was gonna he wanted to leave during season three um but they kept him on for season four, and he like felt things were changing. Uh, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but he left. He 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 wanted to leave the show. It's one of those things where it's like I'm not going to get mad at the writers for killing off a character. Um, you know you know what I mean. So it's I really like his death. It makes me sad. Um, but I really like his death. I will say Elise <laughs> Alicia. Um. <laughs> I remember I, I remember noticing this on the second go. She does not say much when he's dying. He's, she's just saying Nick. And once you notice that a little bit, it's like, okay, okay, I get it. But <laughs> it's <laughs> it's a really good death. Um, one of the best deaths in the show. Um, something I noticed rewatching Fear of the Walking Dead recently is there's not a lot of deaths. Like, yes, we have like a lot of side characters dying. Um, but it's not like Walking Dead. Like, if you ask me, how many big deaths are there in Fear of the Walking Dead? Like, maybe five? <laughs> maybe? I'm just throwing out a number. There's probably more. But, like, there really is a lot. Um, or not a lot of deaths here. A- again, this just goes back to, like, this is a different show from Walking Dead, and I love it so much because of that. Um, you're going to hear me say that a lot. I'm a big, big Fear of the Walking Dead fan. I'm a big fan because it's not a universal, uh, it's not loved. It really isn't. Did you see me give up on saying that word? Um, <laughs> it really just isn't loved. And I don't. Yeah, it's like, I I just it's so good. It's so good. Um, but yes, we lose Nick. And not only that, we lose Madison. Um, now I do have one. I should say I have the head. I had the head cannon. Like yeah, Travis is. Uh, Travis is okay. He's somewhere. He's good. Good for him. Dakota saved him. I'm I'm joking about the Dakota part, but I do head cannon. He's alive. Uh, Nick is not alive. But now we have Madison. Don't ask me how she's alive. I will just accept it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, I flipped the fuck out when they announced that she was coming back. Um, she has a really good death, but it was very hard at the time because. Again, it's like watching the show the show that you love getting fucking murdered in front of you. Because you get the guy, Morgan, he was in the first episode of The Walking Dead, by the way. I would argue that he does deserve having like his own show. Um, people hate on Morgan. I love Morgan. I'm going to be completely for real with you. I love him and I love his storyline. Not in The Walking Dead as much. Um, I don't like the kill or don't kill thing. I think the kill or don't kill thing works a lot better in fear. Um, but I'll get to that later. But it's like... We lose Nick, and then we lose Madison, who was the main character of the show, and she gets replaced by Morgan. Um, that was really, really rough. Extremely rough. Um, but yeah, her death, 
pretty good death. Now it looks like she's gonna die. <laughs> you know? You know <laughs> You know, just a crowd of uh zombies around her. Uh and they're on fire and there's nowhere to go. Um and she's not running, by the way. She's accepting it. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to make fun of the writers for um, keeping her alive after that. All right. Thank God she came back. I love Kim Dickens with all my heart. She's so cool. Um, if anybody's seen that little interview she did where it's like, yeah, because of the fans, the fan support, I was able to come back, that kind of stuff. I'm not going to make fun of the writers for bringing her back. Thank God. Um, and I'm, look, I'm, I'll even let the, let it slide where it's like, they barely explained it. Like, I don't know if Padre got her out of there. I don't know if she got out of there and then Padre saved her after. Um, either way, Padre was there for like, we, to, if I'm understanding correctly, the events at the stadium are two years before Padre, before season, the end of season seven, I believe. I think I could be wrong, but <laughs> I will never forget this. I remember watching this with my mom. Um, how how universal is this, by the way? Does does any, does everybody watch Walking Dead with their parents? I used to. She gave up on like all the Walking Dead stuff. Um, but it's like, is that is, is that universal? I'm curious. Um, curious. But I remember her looking at me like when Madison was dying. It's like, ah, I see they killed her off screen so they could bring her back. I'm like. I didn't say it to her because I didn't want to be rude. I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> you can't come back from that. That <laughs> You're dead. That's This is her death. And it was. It, it very much was. I'll say this. If you wanted to leave it open-ended, you <laughs> this is not an open-ended death. <laughs> you know what I mean? She is not running from the zombies. <laughs> How did she get out of there? <laughs> um, it's so funny to me. And I remember that was one of the... Because I, I knew when I was catching up, I was like, okay, they bring Madison back. Uh, how do they get her out? And I be, my theory was uh, she gets rescued by another group. Which is, I, th I think, what happened. I think what happened. I think the biggest question for all of this um, is... How did we not run into Padre for two years? You, you know? How did that work? I, I can't even remember where pa, where Padre is. It's in Louisiana, right? I don't know shit. I think that's right next to Texas. <laughs> I really don't know stuff. Um, God, I just realized how far uh, Morgan ran. Um, but no, anyway. <laughs> if you notice, I'm not saying too much about the seasons. This really is, a ra again, this is a ramble series. I plan to do more for The Walking Dead. We'll see. Um, if you have anything you want me to talk about, go for it. I see we're at another hour. I'm going to keep going. Um... I'm going to keep going, but god damn, the first half is rough. It really is, but then we have the second half, which I think is kind of nice, and I do want to continue talking about it, but I want to go back and talk about what what do we think season four would have been? Um, genuinely, I'm really curious. Um, do we think Troy was dead? Do we think that that was supposed to be his death in season three. I think it was supposed to be. Um, I should say, by the way, it, it should have been executed better. Um, I think when they made Troy stare at Madison and they slowed it down, it made it really awkward because there's kind of like what's happening is like, oh, is this his death scene? And then it's over before you can finish the thought, you know? Um, that's the only bad part about it. I think the moment is completely right. I, it's just the way they put it together was awkward. Um, like, we could love season three so much, but it has Travis and Troy dying in a really, in a controversial way, to say the least. Um, but no, I do think he's probably dead there, but let's talk about it. I've watched it recently. Um, you have Nick on the dam, which I, I forgot to mention. Holy shit. I, th I remember when I first watched it, it was, and he's like, oh, this is my suicide note. And I remember not being super into it. I just, I, I didn't, it didn't do it for me when I first watched it. Um, but it works the other times. Um, I think the saddest thing about it was the shot of Madison in the boat. And the dam has already exploded at this point. Everything's cracking. And you could see Nick on top of it, not moving. <laughs> 
Like, there's just, just a silhouette, and you see it for maybe a split second or two. But it's really sad to see, like, as, as a mother, your son just accepting it. Like, accepting what's happening. It's fucking tragic, and I remember that killed me on my latest rewatch. Um, it really did. But no, we see um, Daniel going to Nick at the end of this season. So, in the other reality, would season four have been Nick and Daniel for a little bit before everybody coming together while they fight the Proctors and probably probably another group? I don't know what they would have done. Um, <coughs> sorry, again, I've been talking for a while. My, my voice. Um, I'm really curious. I wouldn't mind seeing some fanfic for that. I, I'm not usually a fanfic person, um, but I'm, I'm curious on what that would have been. Because what happens is we we get a soft reboot. We get, oh yeah, oh yeah, okay, wait, this is what I want to talk about. Again, I'm so sorry. The dam, I believe, is a day before or the same day that Rick wakes up from his coma. There, That is so beautiful that as soon as we catch up to the Walking Dead timeline, that we jump past it, right? Season 3 ends, Rick wakes up. Season 4 of Fear the Walking Dead is the end of Season 8 of All Out War of the Walking Dead. Um, I, I want to say, this isn't me being like, oh, that's so good, I'm so glad they did that. I'm really sad because three seasons, all the first three seasons take place before Rick is awake. We got so much material in that three seasons. Um that doing a time jump that is years and years and years and years be reduced down to, um, oh, we found each other and we're it. Oh, like, we found each other and then we went to the stadium. Um, it is sad to see all those years of possible story get reduced down to that between season three and four of Fear the Walking Dead. Um, that part's really tragic. It really, really is. Like, imagine how many seasons it could have been if we kept the pace of the first three seasons, you know? Like, it, we would have had so much content. So much. So much. It, oh, what a beautiful story. I'm sad we didn't get it. Um, but there is something cool, I think, about, like, as soon as we catch up, like, as soon as we get to Rick waking up, that's when we go to, the like, where we are now in the Walking Dead storyline. At the time, of course. Um, there's something really cool about that to me. <laughs> I'm not gonna say they like, hey, everything's okay. Like, that was a good choice, you know, the the time jump. Um, but yeah, no, that's just uh, that was something that was kind of cool to me. Um, God, I just remembered. I I used to, <laughs> if you know the Walking Dead YouTuber I'm talking about, go for it. Uh, I'm not gonna say his name. I don't want to. <laughs> but I remember uh, the theory at the time was, oh, Morgan's coming to fear the Walking Dead. This is just Morgan when he was looking for Rick and them. <laughs> Do you guys remember that theory? God damn, that was a long time ago. <laughs> God damn, I just remember that. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna be real. I'm getting a little tired. Um, we got to the basically what I was talking about. We got to around season four, but I don't know. I think I'm kind of tired. I think I want to stop it here for now. Like yes, there isn't much to there isn't much to say. Hmm, I'm trying to I'm trying to think. Like yes, I'm really I guess I'll say this. I might save me talking about seasons four through eight another time. But should we let's talk about predictions? I mean that's one of the bigger things I wanted to talk about. Um, again, the final six episodes of the show are gonna be coming out. Let's talk about predictions. Who do I think is gonna die? Um. I think Madison is going to live. For sure. Strand? He might finally lose. He might finally lose. I hope he lives. I do hope he lives. Um, we have Troy. Troy's dead. <laughs> Troy is 100% dead. Um, I, don't th I don't know how he's going to die. I believe he's going to die to Madison. Um... Or to zombies, you know, because he is kind of like supposed to be like a zombie king or something like that. I know that's not how it is. I'm just going to say it like that for simplicity's sake. He likes, he's he's in charge of zombies. The dead is his army, I believe is what they say. Um, he might die to zombies. 
But um, how funny would it be if his first death was to due to a tiny hammer from Madison? What if it was her? Like, what if he died now because of her giant sledgehammer? What if he? <laughs> what if she made sure to get the job done this time? <laughs> how in, how insane would that be? Um, no, I think Troy is dead. What was at one point? In the trailer, Strand says he refers to Troy's group as the Wolves. Is that really what they're going for? Because we've already used the Wolves as like a name in uh, the Walking Dead universe. I hope we're not doing that again. Um, it's not going to literally be the Wolves, but you know, I don't want to have the, another group of people be called the Wolves. You know, that that would be kind of bad to me. Um, but yeah, what do I think the end is going to be? Fuck. Um. Oh, Daniel. I think Daniel's gonna live. Though God damn, it's so rough. I don't want anybody to die. To be completely for real with you. Um, do I think Charlie's alive? The last time we saw Charlie The last time we saw Charlie, she was like radioactive, right? <laughs> like she wasn't doing too hot. Um God damn. Let's let's hold the predictions. Let's talk about Alicia. Because while I won't talk about seasons four through eight too much, let's talk about Alicia. Um and how at least to me, she is she got cured. Is that that should be bigger news that we found the cure in the apocalypse. It's radiation. That's so uh, here's the thing. It sounds kinda lame and kinda corny. Um but it makes me so happy that the first cure in this universe was a Fear of the Walking Dead character. That's really that makes me that makes me so happy. You have no idea. Um, and yeah, after her her final season, because I believe that is her final season, it was kind of cool. Um, like I'm kind of like okay with her character now when I rewatch it. Um, but no, that's crazy. Well, I did find season seven kind of boring. Kind of, you know, it's kind of like when I'm watching it and I'm like. I'm ready for the show to end, you know? Um, <laughs> not all of season seven. Season seven has like uh, high highs. I, I don't know if they're super high highs, but they're highs and lows. More, I think more lows than highs. Um, but no. Well, I didn't think it lasted too long and everything. The storyline with Alicia in that season, chasing that little girl that turned out to be herself, it was very obvious. Um, I think it's beautiful that she says her goodbyes and then she wakes up on the beach. And if you remember the bullet, she had a bullet because she was saving it to like shoot herself with it. She uses it after waking up. Um, and that's fucking really cool to me that we have a character who's been cured. And if we're being honest, Troy probably killed her. <laughs> Troy probably killed the one person that got cured. We did have a... Uh, uh, Dwight and Sherry, we did have um, their kid that was like cured for a little bit. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to say that because I am pretty close to ending this video. Um, that's pretty rad, isn't it? <laughs> that's pretty rad that Alicia is the first character. Uh, like I remember when, because I didn't finish World Beyond at the time before I did Fear the Walking Dead, I was like, okay, from what I heard... Um, Walking Dead's end game was like the cure. They were talking about it in World Beyond, and I assume I just assumed that people got cured there, um, but they didn't. You know, they that didn't happen. And in Fear the Walking Dead, it happened. Um, that's crazy, is it not? That's so. That's I don't know. That's just cool to me. I'm really, I, I, at least to me, that feels like big news. Good for Alicia. I wonder what that means for the future. Um, any more predictions? Any more predictions? God, I don't know. Um, I said I I think Madison's gonna live. I hope she's in the one of the future spinoffs for the show, like the Rick movies or something like that. She, Kim Dickens is a big actress. Um, I that's what I want for her. That that really is what I want for her. Um, God damn. No, I remember when season four was ending. And I disliked it so much. You have no idea. I disliked it so much. And I remember when Mor Morgan's whole plan at that time was like, I'm just going to go back to Alexandria. And he's going to bring... I 
I I disliked what was happening in Fear the Walking Dead so bad that I just wanted the show to end and for Morgan to bring all the characters uh, to the Walking Dead. <laughs> um, I'm bringing that up because I hope to see the characters from Fear the Walking Dead interact and like cross over to whatever's next for Walking Dead because they got a bajillion stuff. Um, and like, goddamn, I yeah, that's that's my predictions. Uh, other prediction: they revo- uh they re- uh, reveal Travis is alive. <laughs> that would be hilarious. Um, goddamn, hey, you know they could do it though. They brought Madison back to life. They brought Troy back to life. They could totally bring Travis back to life. Um, that's all I'm saying. But hi, uh, I'm lovely. Thank you for watching this. Uh, holy shit, this was kind of fun to do. We're at an hour 15 here. Um, again, this isn't a weekly series. This isn't, I'm just, whenever I feel like making one of these, I'm going to do it. Um, that being said, expect one of these after Free the Walking Dead ends, because I'm probably going to want to talk about it. I'm probably going to want to talk about it. Um, but yeah, thank you. I'm lovely. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. (laughs) Goodbye.